Okay, in 10 minutes I'm going to try to teach you calculus and teach you some ways that it is used in economics. Don't believe it? Watch, it's going to go fast. There are two parts to calculus. There's the derivative and the integral, or antiderivative. In economics, if and, and this is true in general, if you take the derivative of a total, it tells you the slope or the rate of change. In economics, we call a slope or a rate of change a marginal, normally. The antiderivative is the opposite of a derivative. If you take the integral of a function, especially a marginal kind of function, it adds things up to get a total or part of a total at least. So here we have some function of q. Suppose f of q is 10 plus 12 q minus 1 third q squared. What's the derivative of this function with respect to q? Well, even if you don't remember much about calculus, the derivative of a constant 10 is 0, the derivative of 12q is 12, and the derivative of minus 1 third q squared multiply by 2 to get 2 thirds q and subtract 1 from the exponent. And so you get minus 2 thirds uh, q is the derivative of this function. What is the derivative? Well, it tells you the slope of this function at any point. Here is that function. I've graphed it for you. It's a function, a parabola, quadratic equation. The slope at any point can be gotten by plugging q into this function. For example, where is the slope going to be equal to 0? Solve this function, 12 minus 2 thirds q equals 0, for q, and you're going to get q equals 18. Where is the slope going to be equal to 0? Where q equals 18 is where it's flat on top that's where the slope is equal to zero. So you see the derivative of this parabola gives us the slope. If this was uh, some kind of total function, it would give us the marginal function. If this was total benefit, it would give us marginal benefit, marginal utility if it was total utility. You get the point. Now, here's another function. Uh, p equals 5 plus 2q plus 1 half q squared. What's the derivative? Again, the derivative of 5 is 0, the derivative of 2q is 2, and the derivative of 1 half 2q uh, squared, bring down the 2, multiply by it, 2 times 1 half is 1, we'll subtract 1 from the exponent, and you get q. So 2 uh, plus q is the derivative. Same thing, it tells you the slope or the marginal. Now, um, what if we wanted to go to the in the opposite direction? What if we had a demand curve that was p equals 12 minus 2 thirds q? Then um, if we wanted to do the integral, we do the opposite. Rather than subtracting 1 from the exponent uh, and multiplying by the exponent, we're going to add 1 to the exponent and we're going to uh, multiply. Sorry, we're going to divide by the exponent. Now. This demand function, 12 minus 2 thirds q, that's the same thing we got here. 12 minus 2 thirds q is the derivative of this function. And so the antiderivative of 12 minus 2 thirds q, we're just working in the opposite direction, is going to give us this function, except there's no way to figure out where that 10 came from. So instead of the integral being 10 plus 12q minus 1 third q squared, let me uh, just copy that. The integral of this demand function is going to be exactly that, except we don't know the 10. We call that c, some unknown constant. Similarly, if we had a supply function that was 2 plus q, well, that's uh, the same thing we had here. The integral is moving in the opposite direction to the original function, except there's no way to tell where that 5 would come from because it's nowhere in this part. So we, that's just an unknown constant c. So again, let me copy that down there. We have the uh, indefinite integral, except this is an unknown constant c. OK, so what can we do with this information? Well, as I said, if you have a total function and you take the derivative, you get a marginal. If you have a marginal and you take the integral, you get a total function. So let's look over here at this demand and the supply curve. I've graphed them over here on these axes. And you see that the demand is the marginal benefit. That's what we call it in economics. And the supply curve is marginal cost. So if we take the um, integral under the demand curve, instead of marginal benefit, we get total benefit, which is the 
largest amount somebody would be willing to pay in order to get a certain number of units. And instead of uh, supply here, if you integrate it, you get the area under the supply curve, which we don't call total cost, we call it variable cost because there's a cost that's missing. What kind of cost is missing? Well, that's the fixed cost. If you have a total cost function, uh, it might look like this. P equals 5 plus 2Q plus 1 half Q squared. If you take the derivative of a total cost function, you get the marginal cost function, 2 plus Q. Where's the fixed cost? Well, the 5 would be the fixed cost for something like rent or other fixed costs. But when you take the derivative, the fixed cost goes away and you can't see it on a supply curve graph. So if we integrated this, it would be the, uh, the variable costs, not the fixed costs included there. So let's suppose, you know, we see here the equilibrium quantity is 6. So if I plug 6 into this integral function of the demand function, then you get C something we don't know, so let's, let's just ignore it now, uh, plus 12q6, uh, 12 times 6, minus 1 third times q squared, which would be 36. Well, 12 times 6 is uh, 72, and so the integral under the demand curve uh, for 6 units would be 72 plus 12 times 6, uh, sorry, we already did that part, minus one-third times 36, sorry, which is going to be uh, minus one-third times 36, well that's minus 12, and so we'd get the area under the demand curve equals 60, and we call that the total benefit, which tells us that the most this person would be willing to spend for six units would be $60, and not a penny more. Now if we take the integral under the supply curve, we're going to get the variable costs, so we'd plug in six units into this curve to get the area under the blue supply curve here for variable costs. So 2 times 6 is going to be 12, plus 1 half times q squared, 36. So we get 12 plus uh, 1 half of 36 is 18 equals $30 would be the variable costs. Now I know we I said that this is a total function but it's the total variable costs. That's what you get if you add up all of the marginal costs. So once you have all of these numbers uh, we can just draw a graph so that uh, we know what all the numbers are where they come from. The variable costs right here is going to be this area under the supply curve and we said that that's going to be uh, 30 and uh, so that yellow is the variable cost. Now the uh, total benefit, the $60 is going to be the total area under the demand curve down here and let's give that a, a different color here and make it a little transparent so we can see the difference here. So now the variable costs are orange and uh, everything else, the uh, total benefit will be the pink plus the orange part. Now just the pink part there, that is total surplus, the uh, total amount of surplus that goes to the consumer and the producer. Uh, so let me draw another area here so we can see the consumer surplus on the top here and we'll give it a different color and all these colors on top of each other okay so that's green so the green is the consumer surplus pink is the producer surplus and the variable costs is orange and just by knowing that the uh, total benefit the total area there is 60 and by knowing that the variable cost part is equal to uh, 30, the orange, and by calculating very easily that 6 times 8 is 48 is the total revenue, then you know that total benefit, uh, the 60 minus the 48, gives you that the consumer surplus is 12 dollars in consumer surplus, the variable cost down here of 30, the total revenue is 48. 48 minus 30 gives you the uh, 18 and that is producer surplus. And there in, 
I've got time to spare under 10 minutes is what calculus is all about how you can use it in economics and I'll come back with a second and third and fourth video and show you a little more